Okay, here we go. We are talking with former Milwaukee Braves infielder, outfielder. Was there anything you didn't do? One of the greats to come into Milwaukee, Dennis Makey. Dennis, welcome back to Milwaukee. It's nice to be back there. A lot of memories here. Dennis, uh, well, well, first of all, when was the last time you were, you were back here? That was in the year 2000. Uh, they were getting ready to open up the stadium at 2000, but they had the accident, so I didn't get a chance to see it till till last night when I went to the game. You know, we're going to learn more uh, about your your background tonight at the at the banquet. Uh, you came from a farm family and a baseball family. Tell me about that. You had two underlying themes in your family. Well, we were all farmers. Uh, I had a dad and an uncle that played semi-pro and some pro ball. Uh, it was just kind of you know, population of twelve hundred. You don't expect that you're going to you know. We had two sports. We had basketball and baseball, and baseball was the big one but uh it was just something that we kind of grew up i mean i enjoyed it so much i wanted to play the game they you know when we got toward the senior year in high school you know they talked about well maybe we want to go to college i said no i want to sign a contract and get to playing baseball now you were playing while you were playing high school ball you were also playing american legion ball right tell me about that well i tell you what we went to the tournament out in hobart oklahoma and i was pitching then I think anybody that had a good arm, they were going to become a pitcher. So I ended up uh, throwing a two-hitter, lost the game one nothing because I dropped the ball at home plate. And so that was the end of that right there. But uh, I enjoyed American League. I enjoyed high school because for a small town, we had a good team. And we played in a lot of state terms. The spring t- uh, championship, we had the fall championship. And it was just, I think I was mainly known more for my pitching then than I was playing shortstop it didn't take long for you for major league scouts to notice that you had you had some special talent in 1958 the milwaukee braves at their height at their apex signed you to a contract and got you in their minor league system tell me about that and what was it like to be signed by a team right there they were at they were the kings of baseball well i think you know one of the big things about that was really interesting is that that was the year that they didn't have the draft. So all the ball clubs could bid. So I had like 22 out of the 24 clubs that was bidding. Now the first club that came out was Baltimore. And they offered me 100000 to sign. They said, but we'll come back. You know, let us know and we'll, we'll go higher. So it got down to, you know, you kind of sit back now and you kind of wait and let other clubs do the bidding. But anyway, Milwaukee came. Eddie Danisek was the scout that signed me, and they offered 125000 Well, they kind of put it, you know, my dad said, well, we need to probably get a hold of Baltimore, but Eddie was pretty persistent and say, now, if you want to sign this contract, you sign it now. And my dad looked at me, and I said, it's fine with me. So that was, that was it, and like you said, I came up to uh, C County Stadium at that time and watched some of the Braves play, and it was just, I think at that time I might have had one of Euchre's seats behind <laughs> the steel beam, but it was really it was really something. You think about Milwaukee at that time. Now you Growing up in Iowa, were you aware of the Milwaukee Braves and their move from Boston to Milwaukee? Did it mean anything, or just not until you actually were part of the picture? You know, really growing up, I think I was more interested in playing a sport than, you know, watching a sport. I mean, I'd watch games on TV because, you know, they had, at that time they had a lot of day games. So, you know, kids had a chance to watch baseball. It's a little different now. I mean, now it's all night games. But anyway, uh, I really didn't have a favorite team. I mean, you know, and I don't think I really had a favorite player because I think I just enjoyed watching them play. And then, uh, you know, like I said, once I got into the, the pros and – I mean, I was anxious to play. I mean, I really, I was, let's face it, I was 17 years old, out of high school, went down to Midland, Texas my first year, ran across my old roommate, Tony Kloninger, and we were both 17, so we really kind of grew up together. We roomed together for a lot of years and came up to the big leagues about the same time, which was really strange. You know, here's a boy from North Carolina. He was a cotton boy, and here I'm from Iowa, corn boy, so... Didn't it was kind of opposite of what it should be. 
Well, you made your mark, obviously, in, in the minor leagues, and the Braves brought you up for opening day in 1962 on the road, I believe. What was that like? you think back to getting to the bigs with the Braves? Well, I think, you know, like I said, all the big stars that they had, and, you know, to be able to be a teammate of Aaron and Matthews and Spahn, Crandall, I mean, it's something that and when you've been in the organization, you – get to know about these guys. I mean, you really about them, and, and all of a sudden you're on the same field with them, and I'm saying, wow, this is really something. So 1962, you uh, you hit a grand slam home run, but that wasn't a, wasn't enough to keep you around for the entire season. They sent you back just to get more playing time. What was the deal? That was basically it. Uh, they wanted me to play, and at the time, I wanted to go out and play. I mean, I, I was the type of kid I didn't like sitting around. I wanted to play. I wanted to improve myself. And if when I did come back, I wanted to be able to stay back. Okay, the final next thing, you came 1963. You made it back to the now – you're, now you're full-time. And now they're trying to figure out where they're going to put this new exciting bat. And you've got all this versatility. Did you have a favorite position or shortstop, third base, the most? The well, most? I think at the beginning it was shortstop. But in the end, I really enjoyed third base. I mean, I, it seemed like – the harder the ball was hit, the more I enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a reaction spot. But, you know, growing up, I mean, I was basically shortstop. But I, toward the end, I, I did like third base. Now, by the time you got to be in the Braves starting lineup, the Braves' best days really were gone. And a couple of years later, they ended up moving down to Atlanta. But what are your memories of Milwaukee and the fans? I thought the Milwaukee fans, and really, I'm talking as a rookie when I came up, they treated me so good. That is something that I probably will never forget. And basically when we went down to Atlanta, I was sad because I had been treated so good up here. I almost like became one of the fair-haired boys. And I really, really appreciated that. So you go down to Atlanta and didn't quite enjoy, as I understand it, uh, because frankly, as a Milwaukee fan, I really didn't. I think I tuned out the Atlanta Braves, but you didn't have as as much success down in Atlanta. And they decided to, after three years, trade you to Houston. That turned out to be kind of a blessing in disguise, didn't it? It really was because uh, it was actually it was after two years that they traded me to Houston. And, I mean, that second year in Atlanta, I mean, I got off to a terrible start. And that's probably the first time that I ever really heard booze. And, I mean, they gave it to me good. So, anyway, when I got traded to Houston, I'm saying, well, maybe this is a chance to start all over again. Well, I got to Houston, and I still wasn't in the starting lineup. And the only reason I got into the starting lineup was Joe Morgan got hurt. So, they said, ask me if I can play second base. I said, yes, I'll play second base. I probably played two games my whole life. I said, yeah, I can play second base, and that's what happened. At that time, then all of a sudden it turned my career around. Yeah, your numbers uh, jumped, skyrocketed offensively and defensively, and some people were going, well, who is this? Is this the same Dennis Mankey? <laughs> that's about right. I mean, it, it was just so, so different. I said, you know, to get the opportunity to play a game like I did and then all of a sudden to see the improvement, I mean, I didn't want to take any time off. I mean, I... When I got that job, I'd say, I said, I'm going, nobody's going to take it from me. And, I, you know, it's really something. The last year I was with Houston, I played all the games at the first base. So all that, you know, versatility that I did have really paid off for me. The only two I didn't really care for was the left field and right field. I didn't like those balls hit to me there. I was, when you go after a fly ball, the ball had a tendency to jump a little bit. <laughs> I said, no, I don't need that. So I'd rather be in the infield. As good as Houston was to you, you ended up making another move. And this introduces Dennis Mickey to the postseason. You get traded in what some people are calling maybe the worst trade in baseball history. You and Joe Morgan and I believe Jack Billingham sent to the Reds. You become part of the start of the Big Red Machine. That was it. And uh, I tell you, there were eight people involved in that trade. It was myself, Joe Morgan, Billingham, Geronimo, and Armbrister were Lee May, Tommy Helms, and Jimmy Stewart. And... I remember going to uh, Cincinnati and Sparky, who was a teammate of mine in Toronto, uh, called me in and said, Denny, said, I want you to play third base and concentrate on your defense. 
He said, because if those first five guys don't get on base, he said, we don't win anyway. Because there was Rose, Morgan, Tolan, Bench, and Perez. Well, you look at that lineup. Did you, How long did it take you to figure out, wow, I am in part of something really, really special? I mean, it really, you know, it took a while because the Dodgers got off to such a great start that year, too. And I remember a story that, you know, I remember Pete Rose going out there while the Dodgers are taking BP. And there's, I think, Ron saved back Garby and uh, Sutton are back by the cage. So Pete's watching them hit, and he said, you know, I don't know why you guys are playing as hard as you are because you know it's a matter of time before we're going to catch you anyway. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. And, in fact, when we cinched the whole thing, we actually did it in Houston, and all eight players were in that lineup on that trade. So you get that year, you get to the postseason, and you get to the World Series, and tell me about Joe Rudy. <laughs> I think I made him famous. I know that. A lot of people remember Joe Rudy's famous catch at the wall, but they don't remember that was off your back. It was. There's no doubt about it. In fact, uh, every time I see it, I'm saying, well, Joe, see how famous you are right now? Because of me. <laughs> you, you have any regrets about that season? I mean, you, really, you came close. That was a great World Series. It really was. You know, when you think about it, we played, it was a seven-game series, and all games were decided by one run except for one, and we won that game 8-1. to one. And it was just a matter of who got that key hit because, you know, when you look at Oakland, hey, it's a great pitching staff with Hunter, uh, Vita Blue, Blue Moon Odom, and then they had Raleigh Fingers, who Milwaukee knows very well as a reliever. And uh, it, was just, it was just a great series. And like you said, the exposure was just great. I mean, that, that's what players work for is to get into the World Series and have that opportunity to, to wear that great ring. You end up going back to Houston for your final season in 74. And you we retire, and you still end up with 23 more years of baseball. You end up as a – you when you got out of baseball, did you imagine that you would be getting into managing and first base coach and third base coach and hitting instructor and all these different roles? No, that was probably was the last thing – that I even thought about it. Once I got out, I said, you know, I'm done. And then I, all of a sudden I started to try to get in the business world, which I could get in any door, but all they want to do is talk baseball. So I said, well, you know, I'm probably going to starve to death if I keep doing this. So I made some calls, and really it was amazing. Uh, the Milwaukee Brewers had an opening in Burlington, Iowa, as a manager, and they paid me $10,000. I said, I didn't care. I said, I'm back in the game now. And that's really started all. In fact, I came up through with a, had a pretty good player. I think I remember his name was Paul Molitor. And Paul made me a very smart manager. I'll tell you that right now. I mean, he was only there half a year. He hit 354. He was the MVP of the league. I mean, he just, it just made, turned everything around. I mean, it was just a pleasure. I mean, he was, he was the type of guy, as a manager, you watch and say, I don't have to manage this kid. I'll just let him play. You mentioned Molly, and uh, years later, uh, Turnabout's Fair Play. I believe he was in a slump, in a bad slump, and he came to an old friend named Dennis Mankey asking for some hitting tips, and you were on the oppos <laughs> opposing team. Tell me that story. Well, I'll tell you what. I went out. I was with uh, Toronto at that time, and Molly was with uh, the Brewers. So I go out and said, I'm going to sit out in the bullpen and just, you know, kind of watch him hit. And wasn't really paying attention to anybody. Pretty soon I see Paul coming over and said, Denny, can I sit down and talk to you? I said, say, sure. I said, heck yes. So he sits down. He said, said, I'm struggling right now. He said, you see anything that, you know, I might be able to change? So I made a couple suggestions, you know, just said, well, Paul, I said, you're hitting everything a little too, letting the ball get too deep here. I said, get the barrel out a little further. Well, he ends up going four for five with a grand slam and beats, you know, beats the hell out of us. So I said, well, that's the last time I'm going out to the bullpen. <laughs> well, Milwaukee Brewers fans forever say thank you, Denny. All right, so you, uh, you wrap up your, your baseball career. Uh, what are you doing these days? I am completely retired. I can watch some ball and baseball games, but if I don't like the way the game's going, I can push the channel and change it. Okay, I got one last question for you. How would you prefer Milwaukee Braves fans remember D 
Dennis Menke. I think I'd like him to remember that I did play the game hard. I went out and I enjoyed the game. Uh, I had one of my best years in 64 here. And I just want to remember that I appreciated them. And that's a thing that uh, I will never forget. I do. Ha- I lied. I got one last question. And that you have a bat that is in the Hall of Fame and for unusual reasons. And you mentioned your roommate, Tony Cloninger. Tell me what happened. Well, Tony was pitching that day. This uh, is for the Braves, huh, right? for the Braves, yep. And we're out in San Francisco. He hits two grand slam. A Dublin drove in nine runs. And I, you know, I tell everybody, I say, yeah, it got me into the Hall of Fame. Then I put in, I said, well, I got my bat in the Hall of Fame because that was the bat he used. It was my bat all the time. It just, you know, I guess being my roommate, he figures, well, you know, I, he can take anything I have. <laughs> so, and he was about right, too. So that's it? He just borrowed your bat and you didn't care? I didn't care. It was one, one of my good bats, too, which is, you know, a lot of players have a little superstition. But with Tony, well, first of all, he weighed 230 pounds. I was 175. I wasn't going to. Say no to him. I know that. So you're going to go to Cooperstown every now and then to see your bat? You know, I've been there once or twice, and uh, it's there. But uh, I haven't been back in a long time. Denny, thank you so much for your time. Milwaukee Braves fans will never forget you. Thank you so much. Thank you.